everyone, my name's Jo and welcome to Aussie Homeschool Adventures. It's great to have you here. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. It's great to see you. If you're new here, as I said, my name is Jo. I'm a homeschooling mum to two beautiful girls in Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. I've been homeschooling now for about five years. My oldest is 10, turning 11, and my youngest is eight. She'll be nine this year in May. Neither of them have been to school. So I've been homeschooling from the beginning. I'm a little bit experienced maybe, I guess. I don't know. I don't like to use the word veteran because I don't feel like I'm a veteran at it. But I've been doing it for a while now. So I started my channel to help encourage and inspire other Australian mums and dads that are homeschooling their kids, perhaps for the first time and are feeling a little bit nervous and struggling to try and find Australian information on the internet. Because there's lots of American and maybe a little bit of British or UK stuff and other countries but there's not a lot of Australians out there now. We are a growing group here on YouTube and I've made some great YouTube friends, um, mama friends that are homeschoolers and are also doing YouTube. So it's really nice to see and we're building a great community. So today's video, I'm actually talking to you about my science curriculum and the fact that I'm actually changing what we're doing. Shock horror. So if you haven't seen it already, I'll leave a link here to my curriculum choices video for 2022. And we started out this year planning on using master books, elementary science, chemistry and physics curriculum. So that's these books here. There was this set of three and this set of three here. And we got into this first set of book here, which is the matter, which is the chemistry one, which is what my, my oldest in particular was really excited for. We only got as far as doing the first lesson. I printed it out. I bought the books. I gathered the supplies for the first couple of lessons maybe first two at least we did lesson one and we got really bogged down in it we found that there was lots of reading lots of writing lots of big scientific -y words that were just a bit too much for us and where we were at with our science so for example um there's lots and lots of writing lots of lots of things to write and to um to talk about which would be great if the girls were a few years older. It is aimed at ages or grades four to six, which are American grades four to six, which look, it's not a bad thing. And I find sometimes the American stuff is actually graded just slightly ahead of ours. And I'm gonna apologize. You can probably hear my neighbor is out mowing his grass, the joys of rural living. And it's actually sunshine. So I think he's trying to take advantage of it. Um, so the textbooky part is beautiful. It's got colored pictures, um, lots of experiments, lots of fun things in here. But we were just finding that it was too much reading and too much writing for my girls and where they were at with their science sort of, or what they were wanting with their science curriculum. So guess what? We ditched it. Now, not forever. We've just shelved it and we will revisit it again maybe in a few years time when the girls are a little bit older and if they want to do it then we can always look at it again so what we decided to do is rather than a big jump it's just a bit of a sideways shuffle i mentioned this one i think in my curriculum choices is um, and we're going to focus in and we're going to spend the year doing our elementary zoology curriculum which is also a master books one so i haven't changed very far not a big jump like i said more of a side shuffle so this one's the zoology curriculum and we're really excited about it and we're really, really enjoying it. So we've done a few lessons already and it's lots of fun. So it has lots of beautiful books that goes along with it, which we love. So we start by reading this one, which is how many animals were on the ark. So this is lots of great information about understanding animal kinds. So you read a couple of pages and then we complete an activity sheet. And these activity sheets can range from a colouring in page and a, this one's got a space here to design your own dinosaur, talking about animal kinds. So this one's really fun. It's got a code up here and we're going to solve the code here and then fill in some blanks with the information that we've read on pages 20 and 21. To these ones, which are just a very simple fill in the blank from your reading. So we've read and they, they actually basically had the sentence there and just the blanks to fill in, which worked really well for my girls in as much as they've had chance to read this with mum. Mummy's read it out loud. We've 
pictures, we've talked about it. Um, I'll hold it up the right way too now. Um, we've looked at it, we've talked about it, we've discussed it, and then we're talking about these sheets and we're filling in the blanks. So I'm hoping that they're actually remembering and being able to recall some of the words and the information. And they usually can. They've learned some big words, um, things like barominology, which was pretty cool, and they can actually remember it. So that's pretty cool. Um, looking as that we get further into this book, the information is getting a little bit harder, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Um, on the lighter weeks, we do two lessons. On the heavier weeks, we might only do one. So we're currently working our way through this book. And then once we're done with that, I believe, I'm just gonna double check the schedule. Cause that's one thing that I love about Masterbooks as well, is they provide you with these detailed schedules and you can tick stuff off if you want to. I've got a little bit far in ticking off and then I've actually stopped. Um, so once we finish with this book, we then actually jump across to this one, which is the complete aquarium adventure. And we start to do similar activities with this one as well. So there's lots of great information and beautiful pictures in here. Um, let me flick to a good page. So there's different sections. So there's like a bird section, fish, invertebrates, mammals, reptiles. And then there's a section here on after the aquarium as well. So lots of beautiful pictures, lots of good information. So we'll do that one. And then I believe we switch to this beautiful big book, God's Big Book of Animals, and we'll learn more about specific animals and then you have the complete zoo adventure that you go on as well. So these are designed, they call them a, a field trip in a book. Um, I'm not sure how well they'll go, but we're going to work our way through the curriculum and we'll see how we go. The beauty of homeschooling is that we can be flexible, even within that curriculum that you can use this as a spine, as a guide, and chop and change the activities to suit your child's needs, abilities, interests and desires. And we do that quite often in our homeschool. My plan is to do this and to actually take our girls to our local zoo, which is Australia Zoo. And we'll be able to see quite a few of these animals here in the flesh. And then we'll hopefully go out to Sea Life Aquarium at Malulabar as well and go and visit it and check out all the sea life out there. My plan is to time these trips in sync with the curriculum or being well in the world. So, uh, and the other book that it has is this beautiful devotional and we've been reading it once a week on our fun Fridays. So that's what we switched to. The girls are really enjoying it. I'm finding it really fascinating. I will do a full review of it, um, probably closer to the end of the year or maybe halfway through the year once we've been using it for a little bit longer and I'll let you know my thoughts and how it's been working for our girls, especially here in Australia. Some of the information might be a little bit more North American and North Hemisphere focused rather than Southern. I find that with a lot of stuff, unfortunately, it's very hard to find good Australian homeschooling resources. So when I do find them, I tend to grab them quite firmly. Um, so yeah, so we've switched it up and you know what? It's okay. I'm okay with it. The HEU, the Home Education Unit here in Queensland, will be fine with it. When it comes to reporting time, all I have to do is make a note that we changed our science curriculums and give my reasons behind why we changed it and if the new one's working and all of those sorts of things and explain. It doesn't take me long at all. It's not a hard thing to do. I often will make a note of it in my planner that we've changed and why we've changed and all of that so that I can record it. So there we go, we've switched it up. Now, my girl still had a burning need to do some chemistry, some more hands-on experiments, because these books aren't super hands-on, because you're learning about animals. It's a little bit tricky to go out and hunt a lion in my backyard, or to hunt a, zoo, hunt a zebra, or find a wild dog. I, I live in a semi-rural suburban area. There's not that much wildlife here. There's a little bit, but mostly like birds, and they're Australian birds. So it's a bit trickier. 
Um, so there's not a lot of hands-on stuff with that. So what we've decided to do is that we have this beautiful book. I bought this a few years ago and I cannot remember where I got it from. Um, but I reckon a Google search. If I can find it, I will make sure I leave it linked in the description box below for you. But this is really fun. It's kitchen science labs for kids. So there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, we've already done one experiment. We did this one, which was making rock candy. My girls were so excited. They got to make sugar lollies. They're still growing on my kitchen bench. And I'm hoping you take them out today. So if I get a chance, I will pop a photo up here of what the finished rock candy actually came out looking like. But they were so excited to do that. Then there's sections in here on like physics. And then there's things on like polymers and fingerprints. And there's a thing here on like making zooming fish. There's so much um, hands-on activities in here. Acids and bases, marvelous microbiology, yeast balloons, um, botany. So we're going to choose and do, I don't even think we'll get through all of them, but we're going to choose and do a few experiments and hands-on activities out of this book on our fun Fridays. The other one I've got that we're going to use as well is this beautiful Factivity book. I got this one from Aldi Australia a few years ago in one of their special buys. So it came with this beautiful book and a little special thing that I'll show you here in a minute. But this book's really cool. Um, lots of bright, colourful pages, lots of um, easy to understand information. So there's things about Earth. Um, so there's experiments here like magnetic Earth, doing things with magnets, um, rocks and minerals, growing salt crystals again, making quicksand, a thing on life cycles, um, things on floating and sinking. So we'll pick and choose between these two different books on our fun Fridays, an activity that we want to do out of these books. So like I said, this one came with this little set here and it gives you some instructions and the parts that you need to be able to build some of these molecules. So you can build ammonia, water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane and oxygen. So I thought that might be a bit of hands-on fun to see what some of these things look like in their chemical form. So there you go. It's only week, I don't know what it is, week six I think technically I'm filming this, but we switched it up in about week two. And it's okay. I love it. I love that flexibility. You go, you know what, this isn't working. Rather than continuing to bash our heads against the wall, try and push through it because we bought it and we should be using it. I went, no, you know what, we're going to switch it up. And we have, and we've been really enjoying the change. So don't be afraid to switch things up if they're not working in your homeschool. It's always good to have that flexibility. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found it interesting. If you have, please do give it a, a like and a share with your friends. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I have lots of great homeschooling content coming out for you soon and lots that's already on here. So have a fantastic week, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.